Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I am your lecturer Nur Hidayah and in this episode we are going to look at contract part 2. And in contract part 2, uh, it is all concerning all these three things. First, mediating factors. Second, discharge of contract. And lastly, contractual remedies. So I'm going to divide, okay? Further divide contract two into these three discussion. So let's look at the first part, vitiating factors. Now, even uh, before we even look uh, at uh, vitiating factors, um, if in contract one, we are looking at how to establish contract, how to form it, uh, you know, about the formation on how to build a valid contract, the contract two, on the other hand, is on how it is going to end. Okay, all right. So there are a bad ending, also a good ending in contract two. Okay, so look, let's look at the first one, uh, vitiating factors. Okay, so what is VAT, vitiating factors? So uh, vitiating factors, okay, is uh, concerning uh, consent. It is concerning um, free and understanding of the contract itself because uh, all contracts must be entered freely okay and remember okay under contract one okay we learned that every person must have the capacity to understand okay and must be able to give his free consent okay because nobody shall be forced to enter into contract right so that is all vitiating factors is all about so in vitiating factors we see what are the factors that can okay disturb okay someone's from giving his free true consent okay all right so in a plain or ordinary meaning the word vt okay means to ruin or reduce force of something so here it means to reduce force of your consent kebenaran okay you're allowed okay uh, the way you are freely acted into the contract so in this case, in vitiating factors, where a party's consent is was obtained through coercion, undue influence, fraud, misrepresentation, the contract is voidable. Okay, so what does it mean by voidable? Voidable contract, it, uh, it means that the innocent party or the party who was coerced or, undue inf or under undue influence or has been uh, cheated or under misrepresentation has uh, the option okay to go okay to proceed or to cancel okay the contract okay void on the other hand means okay void on the other hand means um whatever happens it is cancelled and nobody in that part uh, the parties in that in that uh contract can do anything about it because it is void from the very beginning so just bear in mind because different vitiating factors has different effect here all right okay so the first one is uh coercion okay so what is coercion coercion is the practice of persuading someone to do something by using force or threat in a way, okay, it is forcing someone, okay, to do something that they don't want to do, okay, by force or threat, okay. There are two types of coercion and this can be found under section 15 of the Contracts Act. Firstly, when a person commits or threatens to commit any act forbidden, okay, under the penal code, in order to cause a person to enter into agreement okay so meaning that what is penal code penal code is actually a codified okay codified document about all the crimes okay basically most crime in malaysia okay it covers from uh, a serious crime for example a uh, murder okay burglary a uh, rape and also into a small petty crime like harassment also has been covered in uh, under what we call as penal code okay Malaysian penal code so if you are threatening or if you threaten anyone okay to do anything okay that is under or, or what which is a crime under penal code okay it is what we call as coercion okay so for example if your seller okay threatens you 
if you don't sign and buy this house, I will kill you. Okay, so that basically murder is a crime under penal code. So definitely, okay, even though you sign the contract at that time, you can go back to court, okay, and, um, you know, dispute, okay, or challenge because your free consent, okay, was not there. Basically, you were forced, okay, to enter into that contract. Okay, so that's one. And number two, when a person unlawfully detains or threatens to detain the property of another person to get his consent into the agreement. Okay, so now, instead of threatening someone, okay, uh, through criminal act, what this person do is detain, okay? Take away maybe his house, okay? Not allowing to... Uh, okay, to seal or to make sure that you cannot enter your house unless you sign, okay, that piece of uh, agreement, okay. So, meaning that, then you can see that your consent, okay, was not given freely, meaning that you are forced or else you cannot enter, for example, into your property, okay. So, the effect of coercion is voidable. So, it means that if you enter into that contract, meaning that you were forced into, uh, into uh, entering into that contract, okay, you can later on challenge the contract and as an innocent party in that case, all right, in this case, you have two choice, unavoidable contract. First, you can continue or second, you can uh, cancel the contract at your choice. So, unavoidable uh, contract, again, to re uh, remind you guys, voidable means that the innocent party can choose to proceed or not to proceed with the contract. Okay, the second uh, vitiating factors, okay, uh, or factors that uh, affect your free consent is what we call as undue influence. So, undue influence can be found under Section 16 of the Contracts Act. Okay, so what is undue influence? Okay, it's actually uh, where a person okay, is in the position to dominate the will of another and he uses that position to obtain unfair advantage over the other. So here it means that when someone has a position, maybe higher or maybe a position to manipulate, okay, your will or, or your thinking and he uses that um, position, okay, to manipulate it and to gain up. Uh, obtain uh, unfair advantage against you. All right. So this is what we call uh, as undue influence under section 16. Again, he is in a position, okay, to manipulate or to dominate your will and he has taken, okay, an unfair advantage because of that. All right. So these two must be fulfilled in order for you to use undue influence. So how can you say that a person have a dominant position, okay, to dominate your will? So usually these are the person who holds a real or apparent authority, okay, or whether person have a fiduciary relationship, okay. Usually uh, someone who have an authority on you, for example, your boss, okay, your lecturer, okay, and or also if you are in a fiduciary relationship, for example, your doctor, Okay, so if your doctor tells you to eat three paracetamol per day, you will take it because that is your doctor. So by right, okay, you will follow your doctor's advice. Same goes to lawyers as well. Sometimes when lawyer gives you advice, you will follow because these are the person that you think that have a more experience on you, okay, and you usually employ this person or pay this person to advise you. Okay, so... Uh, also, okay, this presumption will rise, okay, in relationship, okay, social relationship, for example, father and son, okay, client and solicitor, meaning client and lawyer, husband and wife, and religious leader and followers, okay. Religious uh, leader and followers, okay, um, for example, if you're a Muslim, if you go to your mosque, okay, and you look at your imam as a person that is you know better than you you tend to hear of the imam's um imam's advice same goes okay if you go to the temple okay and the um the priest okay the priest will give you advice and basically sometimes whatever the priest okay is saying have can have some influence on you because you know you think that the priest is like a better 
in a po better position than you are usually. So that is usually a, what we call as a dominant position or a position that can dominate your will. Okay, so how can this be, uh, this presumption can be rebutted? Meaning that even though you are in a dominant position, okay, but you still can have uh, what we call as a fair uh, a fair contract. Okay, so uh, you can show okay that even though that for example I am your lecturer, I'm in your dominant position to you, uh, and I want to sell maybe a a computer okay the answer is i still can you sell, sell you the computer but later on uh you can if you go to court and say i was actually forced by miss hidayah to buy her computer so how do i rebut okay your claim saying that uh, i have to show that the transaction was not bought brought as a result of undue influence i have to show to the court that this person okay bought okay or enter into the uh contract knowingly and he was not uh he it was not under result of undue influence and this is what happened in the case of saw gate bill i think and Chiu yang uh wang okay this is one of the cases that i want you guys to read Okay, and if you want further understanding, you can find out, okay, about the details in uh, online. And then we are going to discuss this case in week four. Okay, oh, week four, or oh, depending on uh, which week that we are going to discuss this. Okay, we are going to discuss this case. I hope you guys read it before you come. All right. All right. So, uh, again, uh, next, okay, if the vulnerable party has obtained independent legal advice, okay, all right. So, uh, secondly, uh, if um, you want to show that even though that you enter into a contract with your lecturer or with uh, anyone that can dominate your will, and you want to show that actually there's no under influence, the second thing that you can do is to show that uh, the parties have uh, independent legal advice. Okay. So when you show that the other party, even though the, the other party is your student or the other party is the, your church member and you are the pastor, you can still enter into a good uh, contract with them. Okay. But by showing that the other party enter uh, and they have uh, independent legal advice, it meaning that they also have their own lawyer to advise them so when they have their own lawyer so they know what they are getting themselves into okay so uh however okay you have to really make sure that um if the lawyer acting for both okay buyer and seller okay or um plaintiff and defendant okay the parties especially the innocent party have to really know okay what she is signing into because there is an issue especially in this case in chain noria against she ali ben omar i want you guys to read it as a second case that we will discuss in class later on okay so uh what is the effect of undue influence the innocent uh the effect of undue influence is voidable contract so voidable contract means that the innocent party or the hurt party okay can uh can go uh proceed with the contract or to not proceed with the contract so it has they have an option okay next is fraud okay fraud is found under section 17 okay fraud is actually really hard to uh to prove especially in court because uh, a person uh, commits fraud if he makes a suggestion of untrue facts L, or actively conceal a, a fact or has no intention to perform the promise or perform any other act fitted to deceive. Okay, so you, so you see here, a fraud is someone when someone commits, okay, make a suggestion of untrue fact, meaning give you a, a very false statement, okay, or actively conceal a fact or have no intention okay uh, at the very beginning this person has never okay uh, wanted to get into the contract and just want to deceive you okay so that is basically fraud fraud is very what we call heavy okay and on your part uh, you need to show that the the person that wants to scam or fraud you uh, made an active okay an active uh, engagement or action okay to fulfill this section 17 okay and effect of uh fraud 
under Section 17 is voidable contract, meaning that even you are um, an innocent party, okay, in that case, you can proceed to, uh, you know, proceed with the contract or you can like, uh, you know, stop and just, okay, uh, stop the contract and receive the contract. Okay. Uh, does silent can amount to fraud? Okay. Uh, silent, okay, um, doesn't amount to fraud generally because when we look at Section 17, it is uh, fraud is more to like active concealment, meaning that that person have to be proactive and active. Okay. It is a positive act. He have to do something. Okay. However, there is two, okay, there is uh, a two uh, situation where even the person is silent and do not say anything, but it is still can be considered as fraud. What is it? Okay. So the first uh, uh, situation is where silent amounts to fraud if the person who remains silent has a duty to speak. Okay. When he has a duty to speak, but he choose to remain silent, it is considered, uh, can be considered as fraud. Okay, for example, a director of a company, okay, have a duty to disclose, okay, the accounts of the company to its shareholder, so they cannot remain silent, okay, because that silence can remain too fraud, or con be considered as fraud. Next, when silence amount to fraud, if if the silence in itself equivalents to speech, okay, so the best example for this is. Uh, if a uh, B okay B wants to A wants to say uh, to sell a horse okay in this uh, in this case and the buyer said that if you don't say anything about this horse okay I would say, I would say that this horse is healthy and sound okay and then the seller uh, knowing for example the horse is sick and the horse is not healthy instead of saying it after already been asked keep silent. So that is also can be considered as fraud. Okay, so um, siblings of fraud, okay, uh, that is more or less similar is what we call as misrepresentation. However, misrepresentation is a slightly different in concept, okay, with uh, fraud, okay, um, and it has another two, uh, it's another several types, couple of types. Okay, first one is innocent misrepresentation. Okay, so uh, and second is negligent misrepresentation. Both can be found under Section 18 of the Contracts Act. So basically, a representation is a statement or assurance that persuaded, okay, other party into entering into a contract. So meaning that the other party has tell you something that is probably not right or not true and it has persuaded you to enter into the contract. Okay, so um, under Section 18, uh, what is innocent misrepresentation? Innocent misrepresentation is where the maker, meaning that the person who tells you the statement, has reasonable ground to believe the statement to be true. Okay, so meaning that at that point, he thinks that that statement that he told you is true. Okay, so that is innocent misrepresentation. So the negligent misrepresentation is when someone tells you something that he believes to be true, but he has no grounds to believe it. Okay, he thinks he is right when he tells you that statement, okay, but he has no grounds oh, to believe it to be true. Okay, so dear, uh, he maybe is just guessing it. All right. Okay. So for this one and two, okay, uh, misrepresentation, the effect is voidable contracts and same also for fraud. Okay. Under section 17, also voidable. Fraud is basically what we discussed just now. Okay. So here under uh, misrepresentation under section 18, if you are um, told, okay, some untrue, uh, untrue statement and then that statement okay, uh, make you believe and you can make you enter into a contract, okay, so you basically later on can challenge, okay, that contract on the base of misrepresentation. Okay, next we have mistake, okay, so mistake, okay, can also uh, what we call uh, tame or ruin a free consent because uh, you make a mistake um, entering uh, into the 
contract without knowing certain stuff okay so here uh, not, without, not without knowing but making mistake about certain you know terms in that agreement so under section 21 okay uh we have what we call as mistake by facts by both parties so in here both parties must have made that mistake so if both parties are making mistake okay uh concerning a fact that is essential okay the fact that is essential to the agreement the agreement is void so it means that if both of you okay the buyer and the seller make a mistake when you make an uh, agreement that is very essential to the agreement okay the agreement is void okay for example this is what happened in the case of couturier and hasty okay both buyer and seller okay agreed to sell a cargo unit of a corn okay uh, however little do, do they know while making the agreement okay the go, uh, the corn was already deteriorated and it's not already there okay so they are making um they are making agreement okay while uh while not knowing or not uh, it's not uh while in the uh, in the perception that the corn is still okay to be sold okay so uh in this case uh it was um accepted that the agreement was void okay so mistake by both parties the effect is not the same with undue influence coercion misrepresentation fraud no because those four are avoidable okay mistake okay the effect is actually void meaning that you don't have a choice both parties don't have a choice but to um to dissolve all right or to end the contract okay a uh, mistake of law okay under section uh, 22 of the contracts act a mistake to any law in malaysia does not render the contract void a person is expected to know or to look into the laws that affect his transaction because not knowing the law is no excuse okay in malaysia Okay, so there is also the third type, which is there is no section under the Contracts Act, but we have English law cases or, or English uh, common law to cater into this one. Okay, mistake as to the identity of the person. Okay, and this will be the third case, okay, that I will ask you to read, which is Kandi and Lindsay. All right, if you cannot understand this case, Google it up to find more research about this case. All right, next, lastly, although this is not vitiating factors, but this can be one of the factors that can uh, affect, okay, your legality or your contract as a whole. This is what we call as illegality, okay, where the consideration or object or purpose of an agreement is unlawful, it is illegal and not enforceable by law. So it means that if the consideration, okay, remember what is consideration? Okay, and our part one, consideration is value of exchange. If the value that you exchange is something illegal or the object, okay, the purpose, okay, of the agreement is unlawful, okay, it is illegal and no one, okay, in that, in uh, the parties of that uh, agreement or contract can force, okay, uh, the contract meaning that it is void okay you cannot do anything about it so this can be found under section 24 of the um, contracts act okay so generally agreement that are forbidden by law okay uh, fraudulent immorals against public policy are illegal okay for example okay if you want to make a contract to sell or to grow okay uh, you pay um, 1,000 ringgit for your farmer, okay, for a farmer to grow 10, okay, cannabis tree, okay, so that is illegal, you cannot do that, all right, because cannabis uh, is actually a law unlawful substance in Malaysia and that is something illegal. And also, okay, maybe you want to do a contract uh, or for hire for an assassin, to kill someone basically a murder is a crime and something illegal in Malaysia so basically your contract won't stand under illegality 
all right okay so uh to recap okay so we have a uh, few mitigating factors and also its effects sorry i'm going to like resize my face ah okay all right so basically okay um there are few mitigating factors and also there is one okay no matter whether you agree or not to enter into that, it is still void. So the coercion, under influence, fraud, misrepresentation, okay, the effect is voidable. What is voidable? The innocent party has the choice, okay, whether to stop the contract or to proceed with the contract. And void is where even though two, both of the parties still want to proceed, they cannot do it because the contract is cancelled from the very beginning okay so you have to understand what is the mitigating factors and also what is the uh, effect okay of that mitigating factors okay so uh, i'm going to stop now because this is contract two but part one okay and i'm going to continue in the next video okay of contract two uh, part two Okay, because I don't want to drag this too long and it's easier for you to download and to listen it by bit by bit. All right, not a big chunk, just a small, small chunk. Okay, guys, thank you so much uh, for joining in. Uh, I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.